Welcome to video 2 for this unit on linear relationships. In this video, we're going to focus on representing linear relationships. Andre starts babysitting and charges $10 for traveling to and from the job and $15 per hour. For every additional hour he works, he charges another $15. If we graph Andre's earnings based on how long he works, we have a line that starts at $10 on the vertical axis and then increases by $15 each hour. This is an example of a linear relationship between time and amount earned. A linear relationship is any relationship between two quantities where one quantity has a constant rate of change with respect to the other. We can find out the rate of change using the graph. Because the rate of change is constant, we can take any two points on the graph and divide the amount of vertical change by the amount of horizontal change. For example, take the points 2, 40 and 6, 100. They mean that Andre earns $40 for working 2 hours and $100 for working 6 hours. The rate of change is the quantity 100 minus 40 divided by the quantity 6 minus 2 equals $15 per hour. Andre's earnings go up $15 for each hour of babysitting. Notice that this is the same way we calculate the slope of the line. That's why the graph is a line and why we call this a linear relationship. The rate of change of a linear relationship is the same as the slope of its graph. Let's consider two different jobs. At the start of summer break, Jada and Lynn decide to save some of the money they earn helping out their neighbors to use during the school year. Jada starts by putting $20 into a savings jar in her room and plans to save $10 a week. Lynn starts by putting $10 into a savings jar in her room and plans to save $20 a week. These graphs show how much money they will save after 10 weeks if they each follow their plans. The point where a line intersects the vertical axis is called the vertical intercept. When the vertical axis is labeled with a variable like y, this value is also often called the y-intercept. Jada's graph has a vertical intercept of $20, while Lynn's graph has a vertical intercept of $10. These values reflect the amount of money they each started with. At one week, they will have saved the same amount, $30. But after week one, Lynn is saving more money per week, so she will end up saving more money over the summer if they each follow their plans. Let's say we have a glass cylinder filled with 50 milliliters of water and a bunch of marbles that are 3 milliliters in volume. If we drop marbles into the cylinder one at a time, we can watch the height of the water increase by the same amount, 3 milliliters, for each one added. This constant rate of change means there is a linear relationship between the number of marbles and the height of the water. Let's say that x is the number of marbles and y is the height of the water. Reasoning this way, we can calculate that the height y of the water for x marbles is y equals 3x plus 50. Any linear relationships can be expressed in the form 
y equals mx plus b using just the rate of change m and the initial amount b. The 3 represents the rate of change or slope of the graph and the 50 represents the initial amount or vertical intercept of the graph. Now what if we didn't have a description to use to figure out the slope and the vertical intercept? That's okay, so long as we can find some points on the line. For the line graphed here, two of the points on the line are 3, 3 and 9, 5, and we can use these points to draw in a slope triangle. The slope m of this line is the quotient of the length of the vertical side of the slope triangle and the length of the horizontal side of the slope triangle. So the slope is vertical change over horizontal change, which is 2 over 6, or 1 over 3. We can also see from the graph that the vertical intercept, B, is 2. Putting these together, we can say that the equation for this line is y equals one-third x plus two. Now, let's consider this situation. During an early winter storm, the snow fell at a rate of one-half inch per hour. Let x be the time since the beginning of the storm, and y be the depth of the snow. We can see the rate of change, one-half, in both the equation that represents this storm, y equals one-half x, and in the slope of the line representing the storm. During a midwinter storm, the snow again fell at a rate of one-half inch per hour, but this time there was already five inches of snow on the ground. We can graph the storm on the same axes as the first storm by taking all the points on the graph of the first storm and translating them up five inches. Two hours after each storm begins, one inch of new snow has fallen. For the first storm, this means there is now one inch of snow on the ground. For the second storm, this means there are now six inches of snow on the ground. Unlike the first storm, the second is not a proportional relationship since the line representing the second storm has a vertical intercept of 5. The equation representing the storm is y equals 1 half x plus 5. Thank you for watching video 2 of 4 for this unit on linear relationships.